Britain is in the throes of a shopaholic frenzy. We're all buying more stuff than we could ever possibly need. I've spent £100,000 no. easily. But what if you never, ever threw anything away? There's just so much stuff. What if instead of owning your possessions, your possessions owned you? We can't move in this room, can we? It's just a pigsty, isn't it? In this series, shopaholic hoarders get a short, sharp shock as they confront the possessions burying them alive. How did all that fit in our apartment? Good God. This is my living room. I'm sleeping on the floor. This is an extreme collector. Desperate to tackle their hoarding habit once and for all, their homes will be purged of their overwhelming hoard. The DVDs, magazines, toys, clothes, the lot. Is that honestly all mine? When you see it all laying out like this, doesn't it make you wonder how you've managed to function? <laughs> Experts will sell off their stuff and use the money to redesign their homes. But will they be able to part with their prized possessions? I'm not selling it for less than two, Nick. I'm sorry. It's going terribly. Will these mountains of trash ever turn up hidden treasures? How can you have 50 single shoes? And will transforming their homes really transform their lives? Oh, it's wonderful. This is the business. Oh, wow. It's like a home rather than <laughs> like a student pap. I love it. This three-bedroom, 18th-century cottage in Exeter may look like any other home, but inside, it's utter chaos. Thousands of dresses, skirts, shoes, bags, jeans and coats are strewn throughout the house. And they all belong to one woman, 26-year-old shopping addict Amy Ormond. I don't know exactly where everything is, but I can find it within 48 hours, usually. <laughs> a compulsive consumer, Amy's clothes have taken over the home she shares with her marketing manager, fiancé, Ali. It's just taking the mick, Ames. There's no way... We can't move in this room, can we? What did you say to me? You're going to stop, stop spending, didn't you? Every week, normally spend £100, £200. It's an addiction millions share. As a nation, we buy three billion items of clothing annually. The average woman buys half her body weight in clothes every year. In 2011, we sent a million and a half tonnes of clothes to landfill, but Amy doesn't chuck anything. I like to keep and not throw, because you never know when you're going to use it again. <laughs> the cost of buying new outfits every few days has left Amy and Ali with barely any money to pay for their wedding in just a few months' time. Everything is kind of meant to go into our wedding fund and pay for stuff, but it's not. It's going on me. James, it's just bags of clothes. Come on. We've got a house, yes. but it's nowhere near a home, so it's got to that point now where something needs to give. Ali! What, what can I do, Ames? It's just a pigsty, isn't it? It's quite a big stress, like, when you can't even yeah, walk around your own house. Honestly. I just need to stop. And it's just got to the point where it needs to happen. They've both had enough and called in specialist help. Nick Allen has 10 years' experience dealing in antiques and collectibles. Over the next couple of weeks, his job is to sell off as much of Amy's hoard as he can. I've got years and years of experience dealing in the antique trade, with everything from high-end antiques through to overseeing house clearances. I can spot the hidden value in items that other people simply don't see. The money Nick makes will fund a redesign of the key rooms in Amy and Ali's house. Designer Abigail Ahern passionately believes that interiors can change lives. I believe interiors are incredibly transformative. If you walk into a space that's beautifully designed and you respect it and you love it, you absolutely will not want to mess it up with stuff. Amy. Amy. Nice to meet you, Amy. Nice to meet you, Nick. Ali. Alistair. Yeah, well, Ali. Abby, there's a lot of A's going Hello. on. Hello. 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 <laughs> It began when, Amy? Probably at a very young age. And you like dressing up and colours and clothes? Yeah, and, and just like buying loads. You must get some kick out of it. Yeah, I love buying. It's like a hobby. I'm curious how you actually manoeuvre mm. and use rooms 
because there's a lot of stuff heaping up on the floor, which yeah. I can't quite get my head around. Just kind of step and what slide it out the there way. Go, step yeah. and slide. What's the next plans? Oh, we're getting, getting married. married. You are. Yeah. yeah. Well, congratulations. Um, July. What else? Yeah, oh my word! Yeah. The fourteenth of July, two thousand and twelve. Yeah, not long. And you've got a house you can't return to and be a married couple in. Mm -hmm. I want this home to be a home, and it's not. It's just a house or a big wardrobe. Do you accept that Amy has a problem? I know Amy's got a problem. I'm just hoping that it's friends have said it, family have said it, but nothing really seems to hit home now. Maybe people that you don't know telling you. Well, we ain't going to give you any choice. <laughs> Need a scare and factor. And you're committed to? I am, yeah. Are you? Yeah. Really? Are Maybe. You? I am. We'll find out. Nick and Abby want to explore Amy's hoard to learn about her and see the scale of what they're dealing with. I can't even walk across the floor. I don't know how we're ever going to find value in... This is just closed. To be honest, I'm worried about that. It's just closed. Look, the computer page is even on more clothes. <laughs> Amy loves to shop for clothes online, but it's part of the reason her hoard is so out of control. Sales of online fashion have soared over the last five years by over 150%. In 2011, our cyber spend on clothing was nearly £5 billion. We've embraced the convenience of 24-hour shopping and one-click purchasing, so now, with literally one click of a button, we can have goods delivered to our door but it means we may spend more impulsively and are far more likely to buy something we later regret. However, there are ways to protect your bank balance from your urge to buy. Don't save your credit card information on shopping sites. Change the settings on your computer to get rid of targeted adverts. What you don't see won't tempt you. And delete your shopping apps off your phone. The harder it is to visit the shopping sites you love, the less cash you'll spend. Abby's design budget is limited to what Nick Ray's is selling Amy's stuff. They'll need to be realistic. Tats. Within just a few months of purchase, high street clothes typically lose 80% of their original retail value. So Nick's happy to finally find something a bit different in the mountain of clothes. I found something. What? This. 1930s stylish radio. This is like 80 to 120. It's going to help you. It's going to give you another 100 quid. Nick and Abby are taking Amy's hoard to a warehouse. Oh, no! This is like my worst nightmare. This is like my dream. They believe if Amy can truly see the scale of her problem, it'll motivate her to change. We're going to clear this place out, box it, bag it and spread it out so that we can see what we've got and up for sale to get as much money as we can to give to Abby. Unless we clear the lot, we can't do our job. Yeah. <laughs> Nick and Abby may be worried about raising money for the redesign, but there's a whole lot more at stake for Amy's fiance, Ali. I absolutely love Amy to bits, but it's got to that point now where, unless something does change, and the spending and the hoarding stops, then we seriously have to have a chat and think, you know, is this going to work long term? Because I'm not prepared to go through this forever. And if it doesn't happen, then, you know, I don't don't see a future, I don't think. So this is pretty much, you know, crunch time and last chance saloon. Nick is at the warehouse with Amy's entire hoard. The scale of it is shocking. Filling over 300 square metres, it includes 106 dresses, 142 handbags... It's ridiculous. 50 pairs of jeans, over 300 tops and T-shirts, 140 pairs of shoes, seven digital cameras, six hair straighteners and a rowing machine. Nick's been counting it, valuing it and working out how to sell it. She's got clothes that... She's bought, she's tried on in the shop, decided she wanted to buy them, got them home and never, ever worn them. Single shoes. How can you have 50 single shoes? Where's the other one gone? The average British woman has 39 pairs of shoes in her collection and half of women claim to buy a new pair every month. 
But with cheap high street shoes having virtually no resale value, investing in high quality second hand footwear might be worth consideration. And there are some bargains to be had. These slingbacks by Christian Louboutin can be found at around £250 in second hand stores or internet auction sites. That's less than half what they cost new, and they'll retain their value if you look after them. Chanel pumps like these could be snapped up for less than £200. Or these Gucci sandals would set you back less than £100. So remember, when it comes to shoes, quantity isn't necessarily better than quality. By selling Amy's stuff, Nick will raise money for the redesign of her home, but also stop the hoard from ever returning. If we can get this stuff into the high streets, there's money here. We'll mark the stuff up at maybe 30% of the prices she paid for it originally. And I think we're going to sell quite a bit, maybe 1,500 quid if we were to get it out to the marketplace. Well, I'm quite excited now. There's a lot of money's worth of stuff here. But when Amy comes face to face with her precious clothes, will she really be able to let go? Oh, my God. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Twenty-six-year-old fashion addict Amy and fiancé Ali's three-bedroomed home has been engulfed by her clothes. The problem is so bad, even their wedding could be at risk. We're not going to get anywhere unless we get rid of almost everything. Unless something does change, you know, I don't, don't see a future, I don't think. Dealer Nick Allen and designer Abigail O'Hearn are here to give her life and home a drastic overhaul. We're going to clear this place out box it, bag it, and spread it out. Her entire hoard has been removed to a warehouse where Amy will need to decide what to let dealer Nick sell. Abby will use the money to redesign the three main rooms in their home. Ready to see this? No. But first, with the house emptied of Amy's hoard, they are about to see the rooms clutter-free, with just the essentials for the first time in four years. Ah, oh, everything's gone. Everything, like everything. Oh, no. It's nothing. It's nothing. I'm scared. Oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> Seeing her house stripped bare of her beloved clothes sends Amy into shock. Are you happy? Not sure. What would you rather have, like this or like it was before? You can walk it was on. before. Are you joking? No. Oh, we're gonna have we're gonna have an argument. Abby wants to create an interior so inspiring it'll have a powerful and lasting effect on hoardaholic Amy. I really believe that great interiors shape the way that people behave. So I desperately want to give Amy and Ellie a fabulous space that they'll totally fall in love with and that they won't want to mess it up with stuff. Having met them both, Abby thinks the look that would suit their home and personalities is New York glam. I want dark hues in the living room and the colour I've chosen is a beautiful grey and it's almost like applying velvet to your walls. The egg chair, tomato red, beautiful against that grey, real shot of colour, £5,000 uh, for an original. I don't think Nick is going to pull that out of the bag, but I totally believe that style has nothing to do with money. So I've found an inspired one um, for £150. I want to give Amy and Ali this fireplace. Every single room needs a focal point, and that's exactly what their bedroom needs. For Ali's study, my plan is walls go inky, inky blue, black desk, big piece of art, and um, it's totally and utterly his zone. Abby can't wait to share with Amy and Ali her vision for their hoard-free home. How does it feel? Brilliant. Are you excited? I am. I don't know whether Amy is. Miss Amy, how does it feel? Um, I don't know. I don't think I'd use. I'm kind of excited. I'm more, like, a bit worried. The living room was buried under heaps of clothes and boxes of stuff, but is now finally clear of the clutter. And you don't get a little bit of excitement about seeing how fabulous your place is without all the stuff um, in it? I don't think it helps when I'm there excited. smiling, jumping around. I know, you look really happy. <laughs> so what were you thinking? I was thinking deep, dark grey. 
I think it could be really beautiful. I mean, I don't know how you guys... It wouldn't look like concrete, like a bunker. No, it would look like a New York gentleman's drinking lounge club. The lounge, I'm not really sure on grey. I know she knows what she's doing. I'm sure it'll be fine. No, but I wasn't expecting... Them. Until yesterday, what was supposed to be Ali's first floor office was a walk-in floor drobe for Amy. I want to do something really masculine in here. Oh, no. Good, good. I was thinking, like, a really beautiful dark deep blue. Brilliant. Really sexy, sophisticated. And then I was thinking that we would have your desk literally in the middle of this space, so we won't shove it against the wall like a doctor's waiting room. <laughs> it will actually have it in the middle of the space, and then you can... I mean, it's great for traffic flow. You can sort of move around it. Abby's glamorous, bold vision for their home continues all the way to the main bedroom. I think for wall colour, sort of a lilac-y hue. Amy's squidging up her nose. I don't like lilac. It's not a real lilac-y lilac -y. It's a It's a soft Well, that's grey... soft pink. No. no. In terms of lighting, obviously this has to go because they're too oh. tiny in a in a space that's too big. We want. A... I like my lights. No, they're too. No. too... They look like you should hang them on a tree, <laughs> like a Christmas tree, or maybe they should be your earrings. No. <laughs> they're too. They're too no. small. It needs something a bit more grand. The ceilings are very tall. Abby wants the new interiors to challenge Amy's urge to hoard, which means the redesign needs to be radical. It's a strange thing about Amy, because she obviously takes a lot of pride in her appearance. She experiments with fashion, she loves it, but she's very conservative when it comes to interiors. She's not totally convinced about my scheme, but I'm pretty sure that when she sees the finished look, she'll take as much love and respect and pride in that house as she does in her appearance. Amy and Ali are at the warehouse. For years, their home and lives have been dominated by Amy's hoard. Saying goodbye will be tough. This is the moment of truth. Ideally, I would like Amy to get rid of everything, but I'm going to push for 90 to 95% of that stuff to be gone. If this happens, we could look at getting anything up to £3,000 for what I've seen so far. I can't wait to see how she's going to react. Amy is about to come face to face with every single item in her shopping hoard. Shut up! <laughs> oh my god! How much stuff have you got? Oh no! <laughs> That's quite a lot. Oh my! Maybe it's everywhere. Is that honestly all mine? Oh no! <laughs> oh my god! I'm embarrassed. So Amy, <laughs> welcome oh. to your store. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Have you oh seen the my picture? God! It's quite a lot in there. Yeah, I didn't expect that. I love it. Does it bother you though, seeing it all like this? Honestly, I didn't think I had that much. But all of this stuff here has never ever been worn. Amy, this has never been worn. There's a lot in there. Now do you see how much stuff you had? Yeah. Does it seeing it laid out like this make you as happy as when you buy it? I feel quite excited by seeing stuff that I haven't seen for a long time, but then I feel a bit shocked and a bit guilty. Just how much stuff I've got. If I liked the style, I'd buy them in, like, different colours and different sizes. Well, there's, like, 30 pairs of almost identical jeans. I don't even think, like, when I'm buying them that they're similar to what I've got. But now you set them all out, they do look quite similar. Oh, my God, all my bags. 150 bags. What's that? At least. Seeing it all like this, do you think that you have a problem? I think I might do, yeah. How do you feel about just letting it all go, just giving it to Nick? I could let a big percentage go. This is the plan. We're going to load oh, the stuff that you want to keep on here. Right. And then everything else we can sell. Right. So start picking stuff that you really absolutely can't part with. Right. Fashion mad Amy needed a whole house to contain her clothes. Now she's being challenged to keep just one rail's worth. I want that top. These, cos I wear them to work. Bomber jacket. It's an uphill battle, but the less she leaves for Nick to sell, the less money Abby will have to reinvent their home. I thought it was going to be bad. I don't think it's going to be this bad. There's no way that that's going to be the only rail. 
She's going to try and take loads more. That dress up there. Okay. That's a lot of outfits, isn't it? Yeah, but I'm just showing you. Okay. Yeah, I know. And you're you doing just good. don't. No, you don't get what everything I'm going through, like that I'm leaving behind. I wear them. We've literally got no more room for shoes. What about the jewellery? I am flabbergasted. What is that girl doing? She just doesn't seem to get the fact that every item of clothing that she pulls out of that stock is less money than we're going to have for Abby's budget. Less on the wrist. Give it me. <laughs> Give me all the on. stuff and I'm going to put it over there. There's not going to be enough room on that trolley. Yes, there is. There isn't. There is. I promise you. Right, we, how many handbags have you got here? Not many. Right, that's it on handbags, yes? I'm going to be very authoritarian no, now and bossy. Okay, that's work summer bag. Cos you don't use that in the winter. You're with me on that. Oh, Amy, I want to be with you, but you're driving me a bit crazy. After two long hours, Amy agrees to keep just two rails of clothes and her most beloved shoes and handbags, meaning Nick has over 90% of the hoard to sell. Amy's done incredibly well, but it's still tough to let so much go. Hey, it's always going to be hard, isn't it? What's bothering you? Saying goodbye to it? No, just I feel really stupid. Like, Why do you feel stupid? When I look behind and see what I've got. And... But what you're doing is incredible. You're trying so hard to confront this problem. You've done so well. To go from all of this to this, I think you've done brilliant for one day. Really, the both of you, I think you should really be proud of yourselves. Well done. Thanks. <laughs> As a nation, we hoard high street fashion. Seduced by rock bottom prices, shopaholics now buy a third more clothing than a decade ago. If you haven't got Abby and Nick to help you with your hoard, a clear out is still possible with just a few simple steps. Start by sorting your wardrobe into two piles. Put anything you haven't worn in the last year in one pile and give it to a charity shop. And with the other pile, invite your friends round and hold a fashion parade. Get them to give you the thumbs up, or the thumbs down, on every item in your clothing collection. If they say get rid, stick it on the charity shop pile. What's left can be streamlined even further. In the summer, pack your winter clothes away, and in the winter, put your summer stylings where the sun don't shine. But store any clothes in sealed containers and away from sunlight, so they're kept safe for the next time you want to wear them. Good. If Abby is to create the redesign Amy and Ali want, then Nick needs to maximise the sale value of Amy's clothes. Used fabrics can be sold as scrap for around £800 per tonne in what's called the rag trade. But Nick knows the place to start selling is on the high street. He's rented shop premises for the next four days in the heart of Exeter. Oh my God. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? Hi. Good. What do you think? Oh. Brilliant. Does it look good? Yeah. My picture. Is it your picture? Yeah. Or is it up for sale? Uh, it's mine, my jewellery box. It's up for sale? No, my jewellery box This not. is going wrong oh, already. Oh, my pink coat, that's coming back. This is going wrong already. Okay. But although Amy's desperate to be free of her hoard, getting her to start selling rather than buying might be tricky. Can I go around and pick up some stuff now? I don't really want you to be taking any more stuff away. What do you want to take away? Just a few little bits. Well, like what? Not much. Go on, tell me. Um, my hairdressing kit. <laughs> it's up to you. If you really want to take stuff, go for it. OK. But what's going to happen is that we're going to have to compromise on the makeover. If we don't hit the target, we can't do three rooms. As well as raising money for the redesign, the shop should also be a way for Amy to learn to cull much of her hoard. Yeah. What do you want, a marriage? A house or a hold of clothes? What's the priority here? OK. Seriously, what's the priority? Are you guys getting married or not? Yeah. You yeah. are getting married? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Is it 2012 or 13? 12. Definitely? Yeah. What do you want? The wedding. You want the wedding? Yeah. You want the house to be cool? Oh, my God. So help me out. You've got to be selling this stuff. We need to raise yeah. money. It's 10 o'clock. 
and outside customers are waiting. It's time to sell. Think makeover, <laughs> think wedding, think new life, think not shopping anymore, think open shop. Guys, the shop is open. <laughs> As customers fill the shop, Nick's in his element. This stuff is genuinely a bargain. Oh. Get stuck in. Oh, my God, it's so much. That, that's a tenner. Uh, what do we think? Fiver. I think I just got even more emotional because I saw loads of my motel stuff go for, like, five pounds. And, oh, I don't want to get emotional, but I might do. Ali? Yeah? My white suede boots went for seven pound. Seven pound? How are you doing? I'm literally having a meltdown. Why? Why are you melting down? Because there's stuff being sold that I wanted to keep. Amy may have spent tens of thousands of pounds on her clothes, but its value now is a small fraction of what she paid. Unless we get cash, it's going to be no makeover. Start selling. Can I buy stuff myself? Up? Like, maybe if I could... What price tag is this? It's not a good start. It's going terribly. Amy's still shopping. She's not selling. I'm worried. If all this doesn't sell, then, you know, we're not going to have a makeover. We're not going to... Nothing's going to change regarding shopping habits or saving money. And then that's not just the home, that's our future then. So... With so much at stake, will Amy finally learn to let go? Make a decision, babe, eh? We can't keep going round and round. Clothes hoarder Amy Ormond and her fiancé Ali are hoping to get married in a few months' time. Their house was in chaos and their savings were all but spent on endless new clothes. I just need to stop. And it's just got to the point where it needs to happen. Expert dealer Nick Allen is clearing the hoard by trying to sell over 90% of it off. Designer Abigail Ahern will use the money to redesign three key rooms in a New York glam style so beautiful, Amy will never be tempted to hoard clothes again. A new shop? I mean. Nick's opened a shop in the town centre to flog the fashion-conscious girls of Exeter Amy's clothes. This stuff is genuinely a bargain. I don't have money. <gasps> it's crazy. Didn't she spend just her whole weekend shopping? Like, it's all rooms. Yeah, rooms. Over the last 10 years, cut-price clothes have become the norm for consumers. We're obsessed with chasing cheap. But could it be a false economy? Mass-produced high street fashion can lose 50% of its value as soon as it leaves the store. Vintage clothes don't need to break the bank either, but tend to hold their value over time, so long as you buy good quality products and look after them well. Before mass production techniques and cheap prices, clothes were generally built to last and bought to keep. Details on clothes were hand-stitched with a finish to stand the test of time. Many modern high street clothes have machine-stitched embellishments, which tend to fall off quickly, ruining the look. Take this sequin dress. It costs £90 new on the high street, but in five years' time will only be worth around a tenner. Whereas this gorgeous vintage equivalent is a bargain at £80 and in five years' time it will be worth near enough the same amount. Buying good vintage makes financial sense, but check for fading, damage, missing bits and nasty smells. Be wary of lace and other fragile fabrics more prone to wear and tear. Try it on first and remember the golden rule of all purchases. If you don't love it, it's not worth buying in the first place. <laughs> 12.50. I'm a really good hacker. <laughs> so am I. At the shop, sales are steady, and as the cash rolls in, Amy begins to perk up. Right. Hello. Hello. Two pounds for the big one and a pound for the little one. That's four. I need to give you another 50 here. Bye. Can I do both for a fiver? Yeah. Thank you very, very much. I'm rubbish, aren't I? <laughs> another happy customer, babe. You did a bog off. I've done a bog off, yeah. Oh, this is quite fun, running a shop. It wasn't a buzz to begin with when I saw other people selling my stuff. But now that I'm selling it, it's good. And it's been selling, so, yeah. I feel brilliant. Just that every single time something leaves the shop, I know there's no chance of that item coming back sell. in our house. Did you want to buy that one? <laughs> Two pound, please. Thank you. Thank you.
The first day's trading has generated nearly a thousand pounds towards the redesign of their home. That was the last deal of the day. Yay. We are closing the oh. shop. How are you feeling? It's been good this afternoon, isn't it? Like yeah. once you get into it and once you realise like what you're raising the money for, and the more you sell, the better our house is going to look. Yeah. Make it more of like a home. This is music to my ears because I was a little bit worried because at the moment Abby is freaking that we yeah. haven't got enough cash. Unless we get a lot more money in, you're going to have to compromise on the makeover, guys. Mm. I think you can do it. So if I could just leave you guys in charge, yeah. brilliant. Just keep me posted. I've got to go. When I see you next time, I want to know that you smashed it. See you later. Thank you so much. Bye. Well, see you later. <laughs> Good luck. Unable to start on the redesign until she knows what's in the pot, Abby's eager to find out from Nick what's been made. What a day. How much? That's all I care about. How much? We've grabbed a grand. A grand? I mean, I should be jumping for joy, but, you know, it's not a great amount to do three rooms. At the moment, the office is out. Can't do anything to the office. I'm sorry. I've done my best. I'm really worried about the money. Without the money, I can't do anything transformative. Therefore, Amy and Ali won't take pride in their space. And I'm scared that Amy will therefore go back to her old hoarding ways. Determined to keep the money coming in and the hoard going out, Nick and Amy are off to sell the 1930s radio. I'm going to ask him top money, because this is the only thing we've got to sell for you. Yeah. One-on-one -on -one with a fellow dealer, Nick is in his element. Hello, mate. How you doing? I'm all right. You? Oh, cold. She want me to buy this thing, do you? <laughs> it's nice, but um, I hope well, you don't want a fortune for it. I did my research. I had a look on Bonhams, a few of the websites, radio collectors. Retail's out at 395, Bonhams 250. I mean, if it was Bakelite or something like that, that's... Yeah, that'd be a that different story. Through. If it was Bakelite, that'd be a grand. Amy's 1930s valve radio was made at a time when radios, TVs and telephones were becoming mass consumer items. Fashionable designers queued up to create these products. Made of the latest materials like Bakelite, they were highly prized additions to any home. Today, many of these products are still highly sought after and collectors are prepared to pay good money to own something by the right manufacturer. This Echo radio, designed by the celebrated architect Wells Coates, is worth around two to three hundred quid. But if you find the same radio in yellow, you're rich. They're incredibly rare and go for around 50,000 pounds. And if you thought Bose stereos were expensive, think again. This gramophone and radio sound system was the only one ever made. It sold at Christie's in 1986 for 20,000 pounds. And if you're watching TV on one of these, then you might have a bad picture, but you're in the money. It was one of the first ever televisions on the market. In 1936, it was sold for £99. Last year, the same model sold at auction for £14,000. But be warned, it can't pick up digital TV. It's probably about 50 quid's worth to me. That's worth more. That's like a boot fare price. And I'll go to 80. You'll go to 80 quid? Yeah. Oh, my God. £80 is a real good... Shout on that. It's a bid. I'll go another £10 then. Look, there's no way I'm selling out for anything in two figures. One and a half. <laughs> Just get your money out, open up the wallet and give us one and a half. 110 and that's it. God's sake, it took oh, 10 minutes to like get another ten off. I know. I'll spin a coin and we'll split it. See, what a way of doing business. 115 or 130, yeah? Heads or tails? Good. Get it in the air, I'll call. <laughs> tails. Have we a deal, as we agreed? Yeah, with a deal as we agreed. I should have let Amy flip. <laughs> so far, all sales total just over £1,100. And while it's still short of the target Abby needs to complete three rooms, it does mean she can make a start. This is the exciting part, um, because I get to go in and hopefully create real magic. Um, stressful, because I still don't know the final budget, but very exciting that I can actually start getting in there and painting some really cool colours. Wardrobes will go. Abby needs to create a space for a £250 ornate new feature fireplace for the bedroom. I just need this to go because it's so ugly and my new fireplace to come in. So now we're going to sledgehammer we're this. We're going to remove it so it goes further back to the wall. Go on, Liz. Get it, Emma.
Whether they blend in with the surroundings or, like here, contrast with them completely, a fireplace can provide a dramatic solution to a room lacking a focal point. Painting the walls out in the palest of hues makes this late Victorian cast iron showstopper stand out even more. This Carrera marble corbel surround from 1880 needs few accessories. It shouts instant grandeur and totally ties into the elegance and glamour of the room. But here, this simple Aegean limestone fire surround is the same colour as the walls, making the accessories the heroes as they literally pop out in the scheme. If you want the impact of a beautiful fireplace but don't want to spend a fortune, try a second-hand original from a reclamation yard. Or a plaster replica like the one Abby has planned for Amy's bedroom. It now looks like it's always there, which was what my intention was, so now I'm happy. Until Abby can be sure of all the extra funds, she'll have to put her plans for one of the rooms on hold. If I can't redesign one of the rooms, I'm concerned that it will become a magnet for Amy to clutter it up and get sucked back into that whole cycle. So back at the shop, it's vital the hoard continues to sell. But it's cold, wet, and there's a recession on. I think we've done a, a couple hundred, I think, or something like that today. But I try to keep, keep away from that. If I uh, don't know the figure, then I uh, don't get too intense, right, go, go, go. They need to raise at least another £600 if they're to secure all the money Abby needs. Um, we've only made £39. £39? Pounds. Mm. What time is it? It's like gone lunchtime. <sighs> £39 won't even cover the cost of a few tins of downpipe grey paint. Business is slow. Desperate to wave goodbye to as much of the hoard as possible and raise money for their redesign, Amy and Ali come up with a way to increase trade. Let's just say £20, fill up a bag of tops. Do you know how much you can get in those big bags? No, but it'll get... Yeah, a I hell of a lot. Well, that gets rid of a hell of a lot, doesn't it? Let's see, right. Look how big these bags are. Yeah. If I went round... OK, we'll say £15, fill up as, as much as you can. Slowly, customers arrive. Afternoon. Do you want any help with anything? And Amy does everything she can to encourage the sale of her hoard. All of the things along there, we're doing 10 for £10 pound now. Okay. Shop closing down. Sorry to jump out of you there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Can you carry them? £17.50, <laughs> James. Thanks, there James. we go. All right. All right, how much? 458 458 how much did we need? 600? 600. No. So 142 down. Oh, you've you just... done that quick. It's closing time for the shop. There are still hundreds of items left unsold, and they've fallen just short of Abby's target budget. Will Nick find a solution to raise the extra cash and help wave goodbye forever to even more of Amy's hoard? <laughs> After four solid days selling, clothes hoarder Amy and her fiancé Ali are still a couple of hundred pounds short of Abby's target budget to complete the redesign of the three main rooms in their home. Nick has a plan to raise the money and make sure most of the remaining hoard doesn't return to Amy and Ali's house. I found a guy called Eli, who's a clothes wholesaler. If he thinks he can make some money, he'll buy this stuff and sell it on to market traders and second-hand shops for a profit. My big concern is, will Amy let go and sell it to him? What about this? We get him in, I do the deal with him, get him to make an offer, and then it's up to you. Come on, you sell All right, it. get him in. Get, get him, him in. in. Yeah. Selling off individual items to customers was the way to start, but now Amy's being asked to sell the lot in one all-or-nothing deal. I think it's still 50-50 whether she is going to let go, but... She has to now. She has to. There's a lot of stuff. There is a lot of stuff, yeah. All yeah. these shoes. Shoes. Well, what size are you, Amy? Seven. Seven. OK, that's a Not, sellable size. Belts. Yeah, I'd be willing to offer 550 OK. I was hoping for a grand. Were you? I think my absolute best price, 750 I really can't do any more. 800 done. 800 800 is a deal. Good. Thank you, Eli. Great, that's a good bid. 
Nick's fixed the price, but the final say lies with Ali and Amy. Make a decision, babe, eh? We can't keep going round and round. Do you want to get married or not? Yeah. That's what it is, because we can't... The clock's ticking on that, isn't it? OK. Or do you just want to keep a load of stuff that you're not going to wear? Amy? Mm-hmm. You going to do this? Yeah. I think we're going to take the offer. Well done. <laughs> so I can phone Abby and tell her. Hi, Nick. Hi, Abby. How are you? Fine. You've got another 800 to work with. 800 on top of the numbers already quoted. OK, cool. Thank you very much for giving me that good news. Brilliant. All right, see you soon. See you soon. Bye. Well done. With the deal done, Ali and Amy can finally say farewell to the Horde. But what will they make of Abby's vision of their future? It's a new start, isn't it? With the extra money, Abby's been able to complete all three rooms in the New York glam style. I'm not quite happy yet, because there's still a lot of other little finishing touches that I need to do, but generally, I think it's going well. I'm doing a shoe installation. Uh, basically, it's kind of a little reminder to Amy of how many pairs of shoes she had. A lot of them were odd. Um, so I've painted them out the same colour as her walls to look kind of arty and funky. And I've put them on her mantelpiece. I mean, I hope it's just a reminder that, you know, now she's living in quite a beautiful bedroom, she won't want to clutter the floors with just loads of cheapo shoes that she buys and then never wears. An original sculpture for just £2 worth of paint, proving high design doesn't always equal high prices. Cool. The hoard is gone and the redesign is complete. Three weeks ago, shopaholic Amy was confronted with her entire fashion hoard. <laughs> That's quite a lot. After realising how much money she'd wasted... I'm literally having a meltdown. ..she started to enjoy making money selling it. Do you want any help with anything? ..and was finally able to let most of her hoard go. 12.50. I'm a really good hacker. <laughs> so am I. Abby began work on transforming the key rooms of their home. Amy's squidging up her nose. I don't like lilac. This is Amy. Hi, Hi Amy. But has the challenge of clearing the clutter been worth it? Absolutely freezing. Are you ready? Oh, my God. The living room was once littered with Amy's clothes and household junk. She and Ali wanted a room fit to entertain their friends. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm gobsmacked. Abby has given them a fashionable space that the young couple will be able to enjoy married life in. And you got your fire. I like it. So happy? Yeah. I'm very, very happy. I didn't expect this. By placing lighting at various levels against the dark colour scheme, she's added drama and intensity. Rounded furniture, like this copy of Arne Jakobsen's famous egg chair, a snip at £150, breaks up the formal shape of the room. It, it feels <laughs> so different, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, the showroom in New York. Look, it doesn't stop here, guys. Let's get a guided tour, Abby. Come on, show us the rest. Come this way. Ali's study used to be another chaotic dumping ground for Amy's clothes. Having supported Amy throughout this process, he deserved a man cave he could call his own. Because you did such a good job in selling all that stuff, we now have a little oh my God. office for Ali. <laughs> it's blue. Abby has painted it a rich, inky blue and the minimal accessories make this office a perfect retreat for the man of the house. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> oh, my God. Whoa. This giant artwork only cost £80, but its impact distracts from the room's small size and creates a sense of space. By putting storage in the deep window ledge, it keeps precious floor space available. Nothing other than my stuff is going to be in here. Feel the confidence. Yeah, hear that? Thank you very much. <laughs> The bedroom was previously buried under a mountain of clothes. Muddled, unromantic, stressful. Ali and Amy dreamt of a glamorous boudoir they could begin their married life in. OK. Master bedroom. OK. Oh, oh my God! Oh, my God. <laughs> Abby's elegant New York glam design is the perfect inspiration for a shopaholic going cold turkey. Oh, wow! This is amazing. So hopefully it just feels a little bit more like a bedroom. 
What is that? I like the rug. I'm a vegetarian. God, my cot is a rug. It's a rug. Great. <laughs> Amy's a vegetarian and I put a cow on the floor. <laughs> Lovely. The ornate replica fireplace, painted to blend in with a colour scheme, provides a wonderful focal point. I've done you a bit of a installation. What do you think? Love it. Yeah, it's brilliant. Oh, there's a surprise shoes. Love that. Hopefully, it just feels relaxing, but also quite hip. It's lighter in here. It's not dark and dingy. Uh, I literally think it's brilliant. Thank you so much. We raised 2,750. How much do you think Abby spent? It must have been the lot. Yeah. Must have been, and more, maybe. <laughs> Do I need an IOU? <laughs> <laughs> There's still 350 left over. Whoa. So that's towards your wedding. Oh. Definitely. That's great. Thank you. <laughs> well, what a success. Good job. She's done so well. And they love their space. I mean, they're really happy about their space. So hopefully that's the massive incentive not to bring too much back in. I feel brilliant. <laughs> A weight's been lifted. The house is lovely. Really, really nice. I think I've done really well. You've done brilliant. You've done brilliant. It is like a big weight off my shoulders. Off our shoulders, really, isn't it? Mm. Going forward, I think... I don't personally see it getting to where it was, the problem. I think now, for the future, we can definitely focus on us. Happy now, though? Very happy. Really, really happy.